God bless you from the God TV team and welcome to this edition of God TV Together with Emma and Fergus. It's such a privilege to come into your home today and we have about 30 minutes of power-packed encouragement from the Word of God. We want to encourage you in the things of the Father. We want to bless you today in the precious name of Jesus. Now remember, as the title sequence said, this is all about us as a God TV family being together, running together, standing together and indeed praying together together. And if we can pray for you, precious member of the God TV family, please do out, reach out to our regional call center teams. There's a number up there in the corner of the screen right now. They would love to stand with you, to bless you, to encourage you, and to pray with you, and to present your name and your need before the Father in the name of Jesus. Either reach out through our call center teams or through our website, god.tv forward slash prayer. M, mm. we're in the middle of our Hope in Times of Persecution yes, series. Are. Great response from our God TV <laughs> family. Yes. But honestly, the second series of this mm. program, it's been such an honor. Yeah, we, we just learn more and more, don't we? I think as we go along with these episodes and programs that we're doing, it's just been such a blessing as well to have you all joining us in prayer for our brothers and sisters living under extreme persecution all around the world. It's not too late. There's plenty of time to still get involved. So go to god.tv forward slash hope and you'll be able to leave a gift there for our work across the nations in spreading the gospel via media but you'll also be able to join us in a prayer that we've specially written for this campaign we want as many of you as possible to be praying for us and with us for our brothers and sisters living under extreme persecution you can send in as well your own prayer request um, you can do all of that on that website but also you can catch up on all of the great programs we've had some fabulous speakers haven't we fergus you know it's been such a privilege because mm. every time they always talk about those that are being persecuted are praying for the rest yes. of us yeah, yeah. and it is it's humbling. sort of, a, it's, it's humbling and unbelievable. Mm. And, and it's sort of weird to say this, but it feels unjust. Yeah. We need to be about the business of praying for our God TV mm. family. Those, we've said this all the time about whether you're halfway around the world or you're halfway around the corner. Yeah. There are those who are struggling. There are those who, who cannot share the joy of knowing Jesus with their mm. family, with their neighbors and their friends. And if we reach out, if we bring through media, we're bringing yeah. encouragement, we're bringing the response of the word of God, mm. but also we get involved with our local politicians, with our state and national yeah. politicians. We bring this, this, this truth to others because in many ways it's glaring but it's also yeah. hidden. I mean when you think of what what we see on our news, what we see in our media, we get so consumed with stories that are really of no value whatsoever and yet all across the world people are being publicly murdered for their oh. faith and yet this isn't a news story. This isn't what something that our mainstream media are talking yeah. about. And that's why it's so important as well that not just that we deliver the good news around the world, but actually Amen. that we are there Amen. as a voice Amen. saying this isn't right and we need to stop. So today's guest, there's, there's not many times us as a team are comp <laughs> honestly completely blown out of the water, but God TV family, We'd like to welcome uh, 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 Lazarus Yegnazar to the program today from Transform Iran. If you think you need encouragement, if you think you frankly need a bucket of cold water and a reality check, well, Lazarus can provide it. Watch this extraordinary moment with Lazarus Yegnazar from Transform Iran, and then Emma and I'll be right back. It's a real privilege today to be joined by Lazarus Yegnazar, founder of Transform Iran, who's going to share the Lord's heart for the nation and the people of Iran and beyond. Lazarus, God bless you and welcome to the program today. Well, thank you very much, Fergus, for inviting me. It's a privilege to share with the God TV viewers. Now, Lazarus, you began this ministry with your wife over 30 years ago when the Lord took you out of Iran and brought you to the West. What was your heart in starting this ministry? Please do tell us that story. Well, this is very interesting. God works his way out and he doesn't consult us all the time. Sometimes he informs us, but at times it seems to be very odd because Right after the Islamic Revolution and Ayatollah Khomeini coming into Iran, I have to share a story there very quickly. 
Five million people were marching in the streets of Tehran, in the main street, very long, about 30 miles long, marching towards the airport, Meribad airport, to welcome the Ayatollah. And majority of Iranians have not heard anything about it. I, for one, I knew the history of Iran. I had a faint knowledge that he was, you know, sent, you know, deported to Iraq, etc., etc. Five million people were chanting, death to Israel, death to America. And Iranians are very hospitable. And I thought, my goodness, we have been praying and fasting for a revival. Is this what we get in turn? In other words, I thought that God got it wrong and God didn't consult me. This was not the way to bring a revival. In my, my simplistic way, I was audacious to tell God he doesn't know what he's doing. So the Iran-Iraq war lasted eight years. This was the story. Everybody got out of the country. I had a successful business. That's how we supported the church and the ministry. But then after the war ended, everybody started coming back. God told Maggie and me, without any doubt, in a clear day sound, you need to get out. We said, God, this is a laughing, a joking matter. Everybody will laugh at that, and they did. They said, Lazarus, this is wrong. Everybody went out, you stayed in. Okay, it was a miracle, it was a fluke of a chance, you were safe, but now everybody's coming back. Business will be booming. Why are you going out? And God took us out and we stopped in the UK and we pondered why. Uh, Lazarus, it's, it's, it's amazing to hear your story. Just for the God TV family, for those of us that have watched the news in the last 20, 30 years, Iran is only in the news for sort of two reasons. It's, it's crazy politics, uh, uh, Islamic rev revolution, and it's trying to bomb Israel. But in fact, the Iranian people, as you say, are deeply hospitable. It's a nation of profound influence over century after century after century. What's it like right now to be in Iran? If you're in Tehran, if you're in one of these places, because Iran is filled with beautiful people that the Lord loves. Well, you see, I live in Oxford now, and sometimes I had very seldom seen sky clear and the stars shining like it was yesterday. Oh my goodness, I told my wife, come out, honey. There are so many stars that have been there, but we haven't seen it. They have been there. This is what I told my wife yesterday, but we haven't seen it. What people hear in the news, magnified a thousand times, it's how ugly the situation in Iran is. Everything they hear in the press, magnified the tragedy, the brutality, the murder, everything which is going on. But what they don't see, the stars are there, God's plans are there, hundreds of thousands of people have come to Christ, and hundreds of thousands of people are seeking to know what is the alternative because what they have believed has completely let them down. They are truly seeking for a God who is caring and loving much more than the God that they've experienced. Oh, that's extraordinary, Lazarus. Now then, your, your ministry, Transform Iran, now that the Lord has your full attention, is quite audacious in its scope. You're not just about seeking the Lord, transforming the religious environment. You want to see Iran transformed in every conceivable way. What do you believe the Lord can do? Probably not that we can do, but what do you believe that the Lord can do to transform the formerly great nation of Iran? I think in Ephesians, it's very clear. God says, I have put all the wealth, all the understanding, all the wisdom into the church. We have reduced the church as an incapable entity. We can't even affect our neighborhood. We cannot even transform a city, whether it's in UK, whether it's in UAE, whether it's in Saudi Arabia or Iran. We have somehow come to believe that the church is inefficient and ineffective. We have bought the lies of the enemy. But yet in Ephesians, I read it very simplistically. God has put all his wisdom. In other words, the church is the shop window of heaven. I mean, why is the church so feeble? It's because we have come to understand the church is feeble. The church is ineffective. Almost the whole media is saying, go back to your churches, close your door and sing your hallelujahs and come by our Lord. Don't involve yourself. But I believe Jesus has set the tone in the Lord's prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done. I mean, who has told us that the church doesn't have anything else to do but to make sure 
that God's kingdom is established in Iran. And when the kingdom of God is established, I tell you, transformation is inevitable. God TV family, that's Lazarus Yegnazar from Transform Iran. There is actually more to that interview, which we'll play at a later date. But to hear his passion, that the church, that's you and me, crazy you and crazy me, that we would rise up in the power both of the commission that is on our lives as the body of Christ, but also the passion to see the nations come for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, when we hear from Lazarus, when we see what the Lord has ministered into his heart, mm -hmm. it's Gosh, dare I say it, it's almost a rebuke. Yeah. We can't sit comfortably on our chairs. We must be doing the work of the master. We mm. must be out the re reaching the nations, sharing the good news of Jesus because yeah. they are lost. They are hurting. They are desperate for the light that mm. comes from knowing the Lord. Yeah, I sometimes wonder, Fergus, what it is that will shake us out of our slumber as a church. Like, what is it going to take? that will, you know, I'm not saying that there aren't people doing incredible work in this country and across the rest of the world. There really are, but as, as, as a whole, Lazarus is right, we're not being effective for our communities on the large. We're not affecting change in our cities. We're not affecting change in our governments. So, you know, we, if, if God has said that he has given us all authority here on earth, Amen. Then, then why Amen. are we not walking out in the Amen. fullness of that? Amen. You know, what does it take? What realization of of God's love and God's Amen. power? Amen. Like, where, where is our urgency Amen. in seeing our fellow man saved? And I just, I don't know where the answer is to that question. You know, I seek it in my own life as well. You know, we go about in our day to day, in our day to day. But what is going to wake us up and make us go that extra step Amen. and say, no, actually, today I'm going to live in the fullness of everything God has given me, Amen. everything God has anointed Amen. me for. And today there will be change Amen. in the kingdom because I'm going to step out. Well, Em, you have led us the last two years in this mm. Hope in Times of Persecution series. That, wo that wonderful prayer, may the Lord break our hearts yeah. for what breaks his, has been, has been something that has, has just has sort of rattled us in a way. Mm. And we have to be about his business. Absolutely. In many ways, we take prayer time. So in some way, he'd be about our business. Yep. But in fact, perhaps that greatest prayer, Lord, may, may we be in the middle of what mm. you are doing. May we be in the middle. We, may we shine brightly yeah. in the places that are darkest and desperate. And when, as I say, we spent about an hour with Lazarus the other day. And we, we were shaking after talking yeah. to him. He was mentioning, well, shall we say, people of other faiths mm -hmm. in other great uh, assemblies of city, assemblies yeah. of people. And if they're out there proselytizing, mm. why aren't we sharing the truth of God's word? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good question. And, you know, we need to be more about God's Amen. business. You know, the, the Lord's prayer is, Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your, your kingdom come, thy will Amen. be done. Amen. And if we live from that mindset, Amen. if we live with that mindset of, Lord, what can I do today Amen. for your kingdom, to make your kingdom come? You know, how much better is that than just to, to rattle off all of your requests? I'm not saying it's bad, but it is, you know, we need to be waking up to the fact that we do need to be praying for God's kingdom Amen. to come. And, you know, I don't know about everyone out there, but... I find it really difficult sometimes to really hone in on what it is that we're talking about here. When we're talking about persecution, it's such a big subject. You know, I can give you lots of big numbers. There are over 400,000 brothers and sisters around the world living under extreme persecution. One in seven Christians in the world are living under this persecution. But what does that mean? Well, unless we tell the stories, the individual personal stories of the impact of that on individuals' lives, we will never understand what that truly means for some of our brothers and sisters. Now here is Hannah Lee, she's telling a very personal story of what happened to her and her family in Afghanistan. Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, 
He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. We received this calling from the Lord, but the Lord has got a purpose for us as a family to live out our love for Him, our love for the Afghans, to serve, and here we are. God, take our lives and make with us whatever you find pleasant and, and good in your purpose. So it was a normal day for us, and Vanya just went to the office, and he was teaching that morning. Actually, that was the routine every day. And for the children, if they didn't have a weekend or didn't interact with their friends, they were doing schoolwork. Both of them have got a deep walk with the Lord and there's this hunger for the Lord that's very precious. And they are growing, they are growing in their faith day by day. And it's wonderful to be their mom and experience how they are growing. Um, and living their lives for the Lord in a place like Afghanistan. Most wonderful thing the parent can do for his child is to bring him up in the Lord's way so that he knows who his creator is and that he can have a loving relationship with the Lord and live a life for that purpose. <laughs> I've asked myself many times in the past, Lord, is this really where you want us? Because of all the difficulties, the challenges, we can lose our lives any time for the Lord. When I look at that in the spiritual realm, I know that he will not take us to a place like Afghanistan and just dump us there and he doesn't have a plan and a purpose for that. So I know 100% that we are in the right place, that we are obedient to the calling. Come on, we gotta get out of here. We have to get out of here. Take me. Come on. I would tell my children, um, John Pierre and today, you will face a very difficult day today, um, and I'm not going to be there to help you. And Daddy is also not going to be there to help you. But Jesus is going to be there to help you through this, and he will be there. He promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. Come on, we gotta get out of here! We have to get out of here! Take me! Come on! Come on, we gotta get out of here! I believe they are in front of the Lord's throne, worshiping Him, praising Him, glorifying Him. And that they are just waiting for me to finish the race as well.
We thank God as God TV that we've been able to partner with Voice of the Martyrs and indeed a number of wonderful ministries to bring you the real stories, the stories from the front line. And we honor Hannah Lise and her family for the gift that they have given in serving, literally laying down their lives for the people of Afghanistan. God TV family, this is a serious business, being a believer in Jesus. There is opposition and there is tremendous trial, but we have the victory in Jesus. Emma and I will be back with more about hope in times of persecution right after this break. Hebrews chapter 12 urges us to run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Our race at God TV is around the world, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ via media 24 hours a day. Will you prayerfully consider running with us as ongoing support or for the first time, helping us fund God TV on Freeview to 13 million viewers in every home, hotel, hospital, prison and other residents across the UK? Call the number on your screen or visit god.tv forward slash run together. Welcome back to God TV together with Emma and Fergus and today we are talking about our hope in times of persecution campaign and you know I, I'm sure that you watched the testimony from Hannah Lee before the break and I just saying to Fergus it's just never I've watched that maybe five six times now and it's never less impactful it's such a story of sacrifice from a family who love Jesus love him unto death and it's just a real challenge in that. Now, Fergus, you know, that there is that challenge, isn't there, of will we lay our lives down? Amen. Would we lay our lives down? Amen. What does that look like? Amen. But to see that in reality, it's hard watching, isn't it? It's, it's very hard watching, but in a way, it is, it's exceptionally admirable. Mm. I mean that in the sense of like, that our brothers and sisters had the opportunity to go and serve in the hard place. We all come from a, from a, a, a season, a, a place here mm. in the UK and indeed other countries around the world where sending those to other places, sending what we call missionaries, those called, those that have the opportunity to really give our lives to the Lord in service. Mm. Now, maybe the Lord doesn't call you to go f somewhere far away, learn another language, sell all you have, but perhaps he's called us to go around the corner. Perhaps he's called us to love that family at the school gate. Perhaps he's called us indeed, as the commandment is, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Here in the West, there is a huge issue of refugees, those fleeing difficulties, persecution in other places. Will we love our neighbor as ourself? Will we be kind? Will we be supportive? Will we understand that they have been through indescribable trauma just to be at our door? We have an opportunity. Perhaps it's not like Hannah Lee's story, but we all have the opportunity to lay down our lives mm. for the gospel. And M, perhaps as we come to the end of this program and, and and in the best sense, we celebrate mm. what the Lord has done among our brothers and sisters and is doing among our brothers yeah. and sisters around the world. I wonder if you'd honor us. We, we can't see that and not pray. Yeah, let's pray. Yeah, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are hope, that you are our ever, ever present hope Amen. in times of need, that you love us, Father, that you are with us, that you are for us. And Father, I thank you for the truth of your word that you did say that we will have times of persecution, that we will have struggles in this life. But you will also say, do not fear, do not worry, for I have overcome this world. I'm with you, I'm for you, and I love you. Amen. So Father God, I pray that you'd fill each of us with courage today, that you would break our hearts for what breaks yours, that, Father God, you would lead us, Lord, into our full calling for what you have for our lives. So, Lord, I pray for people out there right now 
if you don't know your calling, if you don't know what God is calling you to next, what his plans and purposes are for you. We just seek wisdom right now, Lord, that you would just put into people's minds a picture, a vision, open doors into the fullness of the plans and the purposes that you have for them. Lord, we thank you that you are a good, good father, that you will be with us unto the end and that even the end, Father, is not a true end for those who are in the loving arms of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that we have eternity with you, that this life is but a moment in time. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, and I pray that you would help us to walk out this life in the fullness of all that you have prepared for us, for your kingdom's glory, in Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. God TV family, again, if we can be praying for you, if we can yeah. offer you encouragement and support, then please do join us. Call the call center teams in your region and let them bless you and minister to you and bring you comfort in the name of Jesus. The number's up on the screen and we would love to stand with you today. You can also reach out through our website, god.tv forward slash prayer. Em, we want to honor you and thank you for leading this, this, this big charge because it's about hope, hope in times indeed. of persecution. Now, we've got some wonderful guests still to yep. come, some, some guests that will bring us extraordinary stories and extraordinary mm. insight, but it is about hope. It really is, and we never, we never should lose sight of that, Amen. should we, Fergus? Jesus is hope so we just we thank you thank you so so much that you are joining in with this hope in times of persecution series please do go online go to god.tv forward slash hope and you can get involved in the campaign there lots of resources out. loads of resources loads of really great documentaries to catch up on and all of the hope series as well so please 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 do that and don't forget as fergus says if you need prayer we are here for you we are here with you call that number on your screen or go to god.tv forward slash prayer but from fergus and myself and the whole team here at god tv we wish you shalom Oh,